Here with a fun little video, I was reading Reddit and I saw a post that has become quite popular on Reddit. So instead of giving just a list, I thought I'd do a video of my, if I were to do a From the Vault Rogue Deck Builder, um, 20 of the most influential cards of my Magic career from the beginning until the end, I would definitely pick this list here and each one of these these cards here has a definite history of my magic growth of cards that I got attached to uh, cards that game made the game so fun to play and I just like to talk about them real quickly one by one and explain exactly their history and ex about the time that I was playing them how old I was what kind of decks they were put in and yada 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 so without further ado let's just go down the list the first card I want to talk about is when I first started playing magic I opened up a starter deck and one of the very first cards that I had in there was a hypnotic specter and there was also a dark ritual in that starter deck and that was just the coolest combination ever that I when I was a young kid I think I was in fifth grade when Revised came out or when I started playing Revised Edition and there was this card called Hypnotic Spectre and we were this is a good old days when we were killing each other with war mammoths none of us were competitive none of us even knew what competitive magic was we each only had a few starter decks or booster packs when we first started playing and that was the norm my friend had a force of nature and we thought he was a god that card was just unstoppable even though I did have a terror but of course if I didn't draw the terror and he drew his force force of nature it was basically GG but from a very young beginning I was always looking for combinations possibilities and just interactions between cards like I've said before I'm huge in a, a thing called personality theory especially what, what I call the Myers-Briggs personality type it's based upon Jungian philosophy where that your personality type determines a lot of your kind of pursuits in life and one of the things as an ENFP is I lead with a function called extroverted intuition which is all about ideas possibilities and connections so magic has always kind of played that role in my life with trying to find all these possible decks I can I never had a deck from for very long I would always create a deck and then uh, disassemble it to build another deck I played every color but I definitely was more of a green black and red player more of a creature based player uh, deck until later on in my career when I started going over to more combinations and and crazy decks that no one's thought of but that just the interaction from Hypnox Spectre something really cool in that first I believe one of the first starter decks or booster packs I also had a Royal Assassin so it was really cool I, I could either go first turn Dark Ritual and Hypnotic Spectre or Royal Assassin and that was just so cool to me and lo and behold of course the first first turn lightning bolt was an answer to anything like that to basically a two for one uh, as, as a dark ritual would be in the graveyard and the, the card would be in the graveyard but as a kid that just thinking the ramping up to a first turn at Nox Spectre was the coolest thing ever uh, on to my next card so this is in chronological order by the way as best as I can do as best as my memory serves next card that I really got attached to is Llanowar Elves and I put Fintorn Elves in this category as well because Llanowar Elves was basically an auto include in every green deck I loved Elves when I, I wasn't like an Elf fanboy but I just loved the concept of mana ramping with a creature and Llanowar Elves was a great 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 card uh, from the get go I mean I, I got my place at as soon as possible and it was in every these my Llanowar Elves were so beat up because they were in every deck possible just being able to ramp to a three spell go first turn Llanowar Elves into some sort of three casting cost uh, good old Llanowar Elves into Stone Rain that of course was a very very cool interaction and this also made me salivate for a birds of paradise clear back in the day birds of paradise was one of the most expensive if not the most expensive rare out of revised it was way more expensive than the dual lands back then and it was only like 10 bucks which was which is funny because you had pricey unlimited alpha beta unlimited cards pricey legends and antiquities the dark even had pricey cards in them but good old revised the most expensive card out of the set was pretty much a birds of paradise or a shivan dragon if my memory serves me correctly and i could never Never afford the Birds of Paradise, so this is my poor man's little mana ramper in Lanor Else. And I always, I used to remember going to the mall and looking at Birds of Paradise and just salivating. So we're not going to include Birds of Paradise because I never had it. 
So we will, for sentimental reasons, be including Llanowar Elves instead. Plus, I needed some commons. I was way too rare-oriented. And we need some commons and uncommons. Speaking of commons, then came around this gem, Priest of Titania. And uh, it was probably the first tribal deck I ever built was Elves. And this this dude was the one of the, the of course, the best pieces in the deck is it adds green for every every elf on the battlefield so even my my opposing friends elves helped me create mana to ramp up to that big green beater like a force of nature or whatever i played back in the day uh, i think even like land where behemoth was like a finisher back then see if i have one to show you as i think you can can you pump can you pump into land or behemoth i think there was some sort of pump spell Let's look at this guy here. No, nope, it just says tap and untap creature and close plus pl gets plus one plus one. So I remember the land not Lanor Behemoth. What was it called? Lanor. There was like a war machine or something like that. Maybe I maybe it was Lanor Behemoth and they've just changed the creature type since then, because it used to be called like a What am I thinking of here? There's a there's a tap and elf. Anyway, there's there's some big green some ways to to then i started finding like unlimited combinations with the with the green mana as in i could untap tap untap untap a tap and just uh with intruder alarm that's what it was so like seeker skybreak intruder alarm priest of titania type stuff you got like infinite you could get some infinite mana combos with with certain cards that when they they uh is it carry in there's there's definitely is it nettle sentinel that returns a i'm, I'm trying to think it's carrying ranger where you return a creature to your uh to your hand and you could go infinite with the the combo of intruder alarm and returning a creature to your hand and whatnot so it was one of these let's see what Kieran ranger does return a forest so that's not it untap a creature i think Kieran ranger went in the deck but there definitely was a a card when it came into play bounce a creature back to your hand and it was basically unlimited mana with intruder alarm and priest of titania comboing off to and any one of the elves basically and then you like fireballed them to death or whatever your choice of kill spell was so that very very young age i started putting those together intruder alarm was actually printed i believe in the urza sagas i'm not certain when it came out but it was fairly new i mean i am missing a lot of sets here i had a lot of i played a lot during revise and fallen empires and a little bit through like Mirage and maybe I should have found some Mirage cards because there's definitely some cards back in Mirage that do hold a special place in my heart. I didn't look too too closely at those sets because it is a bit of a blur. I was very young back then and and anyway, so I, I guess Priest of Titania didn't come from the Urza Sogs either. But then after about Tempest, I didn't play much in Tempest and it, like after Weatherlight, didn't play much in whatever, what comes right after, I think it is the, after is Urza Saga before? No, it's after Tempest because it didn't have the... Didn't play in Mer Mercadian Mass block at all. So I think it was the Urza Saga when I picked it back up. And I remember that combination. So anyway, let's go on. Now we're going to jump a bit. These, this first row here is from the early days of Magic. And then I've kind of got the middle range of Magic. And then the late late years of Magic. So I've, I've kind of separated that into 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 8 early, 5 mid, and 7 uh seven late to make 20 cards so anyway then then came around the this was under apocalypse so i can't remember the order of these but i made a wild research deck and it actually used madness so you'd use cards like fiery temper and violent eruption with wild research and you also had you also had other madness cards like circular logic i think it was and if there's like a, so you, there's a draw card one and there's a isn't there a counterspell madness card but there is just a madness decks and this searcher library for enchantment also came in handy i can't remember where the exact enchantments you'd get with wild research but let's check out yeah circular logic i know i did use a uh, counter target spell unless it plays one for each each your graveyard so you had access to that with your wild research search library for instant regard put it in your card and discard it random so yes you would have to discard a card at random and there's a lot of like flashback cards in the deck as well and yeah so fire temper was an auto include in there as well and violent eruption let's find violent eruption that was in there as well so you can see i have four of most of these from even playing on the good old magic online days and there was there was yeah there was reckless worm i don't yeah reckless worm did go in there as well madness three yeah reckless worm was in there 
and obsessive search that's what it is just draw a card madness was not included in the wild research and then like i said there was there was some enchantments that i did go and grab uh in that deck as well but it was one of my first little combo decks that and it definitely wasn't uh, a mainstream deck, but I made it competitive. I actually went pretty far with this deck. I think this is the first set I actually did start playing more competitively. Like I said, I can't remember which came first, the Torment or the Apocalypse type block, but I started started playing more competitively during those those years, and the earlier days I was more of a casual player. Uh, then I guess I'd put this over here in the Manus pile. I also played a Frog in the uh, Frog in a Blender is what the deck was called. I guess it was the the first standard deck. Besides, I was a little kid once, and I I brought my little Lanaware Else deck. I think it was. I can't even remember what it was, but it was a deck that beat all my friends. And I was I was up in a, in Salt Lake. I lived in rural Utah at the time. I was up in Salt Lake and I had some time to kill. And there was I was at the Magic Shop, and they actually had a tournament going on. And I had my deck with me, and I was so excited to play it and I didn't even get a play because I played against decks that were like stasis lock and winter orb decks that you did, first turn your opponent put something huge out and you didn't even get a play of the game because I of course didn't have any answers to the combo so my first real tournament came in college when I was able to play a frog in the blender deck with basking root walla and fiery tempers and and whatnot and and wild mongrel so i could definitely include one of those cards but i think basking root Law, since it was a lizard and i had a lizard growing up his name was gorath he was an iguana cool little guy and this is kind of like a little iguana basking root Law, of course was a was a favorite of mine then i think i played the next competitive deck that i played pretty religiously was a mono black deck i think corrupt was in the deck and i think there was another uh x spell spend only black mana and it was just a mono black, spend a lot of mana, control your opponent. There was cards like um, Persecute in the deck that a lot of there was a lot of monocolored car uh, monocolored decks at the time, or at least you could get plenty of their cards out with the Persecute. That's the target player discards a card card. Or you name a color and they discard all cards of that color from their hand. And there was there was a few other cards in this cobbled coffers. I, mean, I can't remember exactly the deck list, but this was the engine that made it work. Like I said, at the 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 uh, kill condition was kind of like a drain life type card, and it was a very fun deck. I played that pretty competitively and, until I again took a break from from Magic. Then when I kind of got in, I kind of want to move this Oversold Cemetery over to this pile, and I probably should because this was towards the end. This. This uh, set onslaught was right before what we call mod. It's the last set before, last block before modern, and I mainly played it on the the backswing of it. So I didn't play it with the previous set. What I can't even remember what came before onslaught. I don't think I played much at all. And did it go Odyssey Torment? Judgment then also I I think there is another set that I'm th I'm I'm not remembering at the time that was in between that I played very little of, and the when I came back into the Magic I immediately started playing this Oversold Cemetery deck and it, it played cards like Ravenous Baloth and uh, Phyrexian the minus four minus four dude Phyrexian Lord Phyrexian something Phyrexian it's a five mana caster dude Phyrexian yeah, let's see here. Let's go by mana cost and see if we can find. There's a cool thing about Magic Online is you can find all your old school cards. And Phyrexian Plague, Plague Lord was in there, and you can sacrifice it. Target creature gets minus four, minus four, or sacrifice a creature. Target creature gets minus one, minus one. So it was your sack outlet for your Oversold Cemetery to get your uh, what you call it, your Solemn Simulacrums in the graveyard for card advantage and it had a plenty plenty of other cards like i said to stabilize with life you had the uh, you had the ravenous baloth and there's a few other card drawing cards there, there's very efficient like like an elf card i do believe back then that drew a card when it died and you also got to get a land or maybe you got more i can't remember exactly like it's just all efficient cards that when they came into play you drew a card or when they died you drew a card and you just got so much value out of out of oversold cemetery and i made a lot of decks around this trying to 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 break it and it actually worked quite well i think this is actually when they they came up with the concept the deck the black green deck called the rock I hope you enjoyed part one of the From the Vaults Rogue Deck Builder. We'll have the From the Vaults Rogue Deck Builder part two here shortly. Thanks for watching.